me say again how just overjoyed I am to be here with all of you. Advent, I think, is probably my favorite season. There's something just incredibly special about this season of waiting as we journey towards the manger. And to be with all of you at St. Mark's, and we have confirmations, and I'm with my friends and colleagues, Peter and Elizabeth and Justin and Dylan Mello, your region missionary, is tucked over there in the back uh, with his family. It is just so great to be part of the body of Christ gathered together on this day to be worshiping the Lord in fourth Advent. And I share with you this morning um, what sounds a little bit more like Christmas because I think I'm just getting really excited as we get uh, closer to the blessing of the manger. And I will confess that ever since I was very young, one of my favorite Christmas stories is the story of the little drummer boy. I love everything about the story of the little drummer boy. I love the music. I love the little drummer boy himself. I love the three wise men. In particular, I love the story of Jesus encountering the young drummer boy in the manger. I think the only thing I didn't like about the little drummer boy when I was a little girl was how much my brother teased me as I cried when the little drummer boy played his drum for the baby Jesus. The story of the little drummer boy, for those of you who don't remember it, is it's the story of a young boy named Aaron whose parents loved him very much. His parents gave him a drum for his birthday that he played with great delight. It was a gift that was given to him in love, in unconditional love. Tragedy strikes Aaron's family when some thieves break in and kill his parents leaving Aaron homeless, familyless, familyless, and lost. Taking his drum, he travels to the desert, carrying within his heart a deep hatred for those who had killed his parents. With time, this hatred grew into hating all people, and the burden that he carried in his heart was great. A money-seeking traveler latches on to Aaron and his drumming talents, and he hopes to exploit him for a profit. In his journey with the traveler, he meets three wise men. These thoughtful and generous men tell him that they seek the one that the bright star in the sky points to, the one that will lead them. That's where the star points them and they seek to follow it. The traveler then sells Aaron's camel to the wise men for a great price, and Aaron is then set free to go on his own way. Freed from the shackles of the for-profit traveler, Aaron, too, seeks to follow the star. He's seeking not the Christ child, but the hope of regaining his camel. As he journeys closer to the manger, however, something happens to Aaron that he does not expect. The hatred that he's been carrying in his heart begins to melt. He sees, he feels, he senses in this baby a love that glows, and that love fills all the places in Aaron's heart. As he begins to play his drum, love shines from the baby, from Mary, from Joseph, and from the crowd of strangers that have gathered to see the newborn king. Aaron's life is made new, his heart is healed, and his ability to love is returned to him, and he can journey forward from the manger as a man made whole by love a man made whole by his encounter with the Christ child in the showering of God's love. It's a simple story. It may seem too simple for us adults. And yet, if we, imag- if we examine the story, we can see in it pieces of our own story and our own longings. The first part of the story links to our lives. The wrongs that have been done to us throughout our lifetimes have hardened our hearts and made us bitter. 
We think of the betrayals or the losses that have felt to us like the looting and pillaging of our lives. And from those come a resentment that we carry in our hearts that makes us no longer trust the stranger and sometimes can even keep us from fully trusting our friends. It becomes like a heavy stone that we carry in our heart. These losses can burden us and make us wintry and afraid, afraid of getting too close to others. But it does not need to be the tone of betrayal or resentment that burdens us. It could be a loss, a loss of a friendship or a companion, the loss of a wish, the loss of a dream. Those losses weigh heavy on our hearts if we don't find ways to mourn them, ways to celebrate what has been good and to mourn what we have lost. These make us like the little drummer boy, alone in a world filled with people, heavy in heart and sad. In our lives, we also know the story of the traveler seeking a prophet, the part of us that wants to get the best deal, the best price, sometimes regardless of the cost that it may come to others. Sometimes we see that side of ourselves clearly, and sometimes we do not. When we neglect the poor and the homeless, the lost and the destitute, the refugee and the immigrant, we can see in ourselves the for-profit traveler. And we may squirm with the truth that that reveals. And so perhaps we're invited to ask on this day, are we like the little drummer boy, willing to risk the journey to the manger? What might we find there? Hmm. Will it be for us a life-changing experience that fills our heart with love and heals the places of brokenness and loss? Or is that just a fairy tale for Hollywood and for little children looking for happy endings? I believe, I know in my heart that what the Christ child offers to us in the manger is not a fairy tale or some faraway fantasy, but it is a truth of whose light that if we look at it is blinding. The truth of the incarnation is that God himself who lies in that manger looking out on the world in love, that God himself, looking out to the world from the manger, is offering to the world love. God looks up at us from the manger and offers to us new life. Perhaps we can hear Jesus say, as you look at me in the manger, See yourselves. See yourselves not as you were as a baby, but as you are today in this moment, because today is your birthday. Today is the day you are born into new life. Today is a day of hope and promise. So the question for us is how do we say yes to that newness, that new life? That risk for us is both very small and very great. That risk involves letting God, letting Jesus, and letting God's love in. A love that can wash over our hurt places, our brokenness, and heal them. Speaking God's ever-present word of yes in our lives. But saying yes to Jesus is more than just saying yes to that kind of love. It's saying yes to the man who ate with sinners and tax collectors, loved Samaritans and lepers, and shared himself with those of lowly estate and those of great wealth. 
Jesus offered God's love to everyone and anyone. Are we willing to say yes to that kind of love, to living that kind of love, that kind of love that says not only us or me, but all? And another risk of saying yes to God is saying yes to forgiveness. God's love, the love of Jesus, is about forgiveness. That little drummer boy could look into the eyes of Jesus and be reconciled with his fellow human beings, letting go of all his hatred and resentment. Are we willing to let go of that, which for some of us has become a security blanket or a wall to hide behind? It is safer to judge than be judged, safer to have power over. Jesus says, let go of that. Let go of that burden and see the world with the eyes of love, eyes that are willing to see the hurts and the needs of the world and then respond to them. Respond to them with our God-given talents of kindness, generosity, unselfishness, and love. God's love. The love of forgiveness. And if we dare, a love of reconciliation. The journey to the manger can be lonely, or it can be thrilling and exhilarating. The risk of the manger is to see ourselves as childlike, childlike in a world filled with possibilities and dreams. Childlike in that we can see every day as a day for new life and a new journey. Every day is a chance to say yes to the love of Jesus, Every day that love fills the air like it fills the air of the manger. That air can fill our lives. We risk a lot if we say yes to that kind of love. We risk our old, comfortable patterns. We risk our safe routines. But what we gain, what we gain is new life. Life that is not burdened by hate or resentment, or past hurts, but rather it's a life that's lived forward, a life lived in a journey filled with new adventures, and a life filled with God's love. Amen.